Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this is my YouTube channel called Sherelle Thinks, where I talk about all things health anxiety related. And um, my son is asleep there in the back, so uh, I just thought it would give me 10 minutes or so to do a quick video. And something that I've wanted to speak about for a while actually, um, but haven't done so yet, I don't think, is about something called symptom imperative or symptom shifting. Um, they both mean the exact same thing, but essentially it's the reason why we go from having one symptom to then having another one. And I think it really rattles us when this happens, this whole symptom imperative, because it really throws us off. You know, maybe we've become comfortable with our twitches, let's just say, and then all of a sudden we're getting headaches or digestive complaints. And, you know, the reason that this happens is that in, in a way, it's it's strange because it's recovery from the previous symptom, which is a good thing. It means that you no longer fear the previous symptom, so you've resolved that one. But unfortunately, that resolution has its consequences, and its consequences is that your nervous system is still heightened. And so because the nervous system is still heightened and it still wants to get your attention, it has to be creative and it has to find another way. Um, which is why new symptoms will pop up. So I remember speaking to my auntie about this before. This was years ago. And I and I said to her, like, what are your anxiety symptoms? And she said, well, I don't know, because they change all of the time. Like, they, they're they constantly evolving. And I remember thinking, oh, gosh, that must be awful. Like, because at that time I was younger and it was only really, like, palpitations and a little bit of, I guess, depersonalization that I used to deal with. But when I got older and I developed health anxiety, I finally understood what she meant, that if somebody was to ask me in the middle of my health anxiety journey, like, what are your anxiety symptoms? I wouldn't really know how to answer them because they were just chopping and changing all of the time. You know, I was going from like headaches to stomach issues to neurological symptoms to all sorts. And it was just never ending, depending on what it was that I was currently fixated on. So... Symptom imperative, it, it fascinates me in a way. I mean, it terrifies me also, but it fascinates me in the sense that your nervous system will get super creative. Um, it's in the same way that a lot of us feel that we can like manifest our symptoms because, you know, we'll perhaps read about a certain condition and then boom, the next day, there we are. We've got the exact symptom. So our nervous system is, is always um, trying to pull these uh, tricks on us not in a malicious way, but because it truly believes that there's something wrong, like well and truly. So if it needs to get your attention, it will try and get your attention in the loudest way possible. Um, which is why sometimes these symptoms can be very, very intense, very intense and almost hard to believe that anxiety can do it to us. And so my experience with symptom imperative was difficult because each and every time a new symptom would come, suddenly it would surpass all of the previous ones. It would be like the worst one I'd ever had, the most convincing. I'd be totally tunnel visioned and I'd think, no, do you know what? All of the previous ones I had were not as bad as this. This is the worst. And so because of that thing can, of course, then you go down a new rabbit hole and then you, you know, you claw yourself out of that one and then you go down another one. And that's how we end up in that awful kind of vicious cycle that we see with health anxiety. So what do we do about it? What do we do about symptom imperative? Well, it's difficult, but something that I implement with my clients with new symptoms is like a two week wait. Um, you know, providing that it's nothing like ultra serious, like, you know, anything that involves like profusely bleeding or a rapidly growing lump, like, you know, we can't use that rule for that. But, you know, with new symptoms, let's just say I'm twitching for months and twitches start to go away. Then all of a sudden I'm getting like really bad acid reflux, let's just say. Well, what I can do is I can set a two week rule. So I say to myself, okay, this symptom, this new symptom is making me uncomfortable. My brain doesn't like sitting with this symptom and I want to know what it is. And I'm really tempted to Google and I'm tempted to go to the doctors and I'm tempted to sit and think about it all the time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a little date in my diary for it for in two weeks time. And if I'm still worried about the symptom, at that at the you know that two week point like I'll go and book a doctor's appointment but in the meantime I'm not going to google it I'm not going to check it all the time 
I'm not going to seek loads of reassurance because when I start doing those things, that's when a symptom becomes chronic because we're literally fueling the fire. Every time we go to Google, we're literally telling ourselves there might be something wrong. There might be something wrong. So we're sending that signal of doubt to our nervous system and our nervous system's like, oh my gosh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe there is something wrong. Oh my goodness, right? That's why, you know, when I was having headaches back in 2018, it went on for four months because every day I'm Googling headaches. So if I'm Googling headaches and I'm seeking reassurance and I'm going to all of these appointments, do you think my headache's going to go away? No, it's not. So with symptom imperative, when we want to apply the two-week rule, it's not just saying like, I'm going to book an, uh, an appointment for two weeks time. It's also cutting out all of the chaos in the meantime. Anything that could make that symptom worse has to go and they are the safety behaviors so we stop all safety behaviors and we do nothing for two weeks no safety behaviors we're not going to check on it 24 7 we're not going to google it we're not going to do any of these things we're just going to say i do not like this symptom but i am i will if i get to two weeks and this symptom is still there i'm still worried about it i will book a doctor's appointment but until then trying to problem solve it is useless right so I understand how how rattling symptom imperative is. It's For me, it was always the biggest issue was the fact that I would resolve one thing and then a new set of symptoms would come. And I would feel as though I was back to square one every single time. Just every new wave of symptoms and anxiety would bring about like this sense of like, this time is the worst time. This time I'm, I'm definitely right. This time everyone else is wrong, you know, and, and, and I need to trust my intuition, right? I've done it. I've been there and I know how it feels. So symptom imperative is just a fancy word for saying that your nervous system is trying to pull you back in and it'll do whatever it needs to do to ensure that that happens. And it works because symptoms are attention grabbing and they're supposed to be attention grabbing, right? So just try it out, guys. Try the two week rule out with, with things that, you know, are, are, are non-life threatening and you know, don't do any of the safety behaviors in the meantime and see where you are in two weeks because I've done it many times and actually like the symptom has gone away because I've allowed it to, because I haven't acted on it. It's when we take action that the complications happen, if you know what I mean. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know your own thoughts. I'd love to hear them. Um, and I'll see you guys real soon. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, where I post daily health anxiety reels, you can do. Um, I'm on there at Sherelle Thinks. If you're looking for one-to-one -one health anxiety coaching from me, um, you can apply using the link below um, and my PA will, will get in touch with you and let you know when my availability is. Um, so yeah, take care guys. See you soon.